Hey guys, welcome back. So today in this video, we're gonna be doing a little bit of iOS kernel research, and we're gonna be studying specifically how the iOS kernel manages processes and applications from user land in the kernel level. So we're basically gonna be looking at how these processes are actually handled and interpreted at kernel level, how they're stored, and uh, just to get an understanding of uh, this, this part of the iOS kernel. So this knowledge is not specifically, um, it's not directly applicable to like iOS security and exploitation, but having these different understandings of things in the kernel, uh, at least for me, it's been very useful in my job and my personal research over the last few months. So hopefully you guys will learn something from this and uh, will have some kind of use for it. So basically what we're gonna be doing is understanding how uh, a process, how the process structures and task structures work at the kernel level. And basically we're gonna be writing some like small program that's just gonna do some demonstrations showing, uh, reading out some processes from kernel memory and just showing all the, the different components of them and what, what makes them up. So um, we're gonna be using memctl to start with because obviously that is a great tool for 64-bit iOS devices that we can actually use as a kind of partial kernel debugger. And uh, I'm not sure if you guys have played around with that tool before, but if you have, then you may have seen the feature on that, the actual command that allows you to find a process structure for a given process ID. So this actually gives us a great starting point before having to actually dig uh, into this ourselves. We can actually use memctl uh, to get an understanding of how this works. So if we go onto my MacBook here and we're just gonna SSH into my iPhone and we're gonna run memctl. And if we type the question mark, we'll see a list of all of the possible commands that there are. So you can see here that the FPR command here followed by a process ID will find us the proc struct for a given process. So the proc struct, this is one of the things we're gonna be studying. We're also gonna be looking at the task struct, but mostly the proc struct is what we're gonna be focusing on in this video. And um, yeah, so let's actually just run this command and see what this gives us. So if we type in FPR and we type the process ID of a given process. So for example, if we type process ID one, that should be launch D. So we'll just type that, we're gonna enter that. memctl is gonna uh, use its magic by setting up a kernel function call and it's gonna call uh, the X new function proc for PID or something along those lines to actually find the, the pointer to that proc struct. And you can see there it's returned that, so we have this kernel pointer here. Now this is the pointer to the proc struct for launch D. So if we just uh, examine the memory at this address, so we can do R for read, and then let's just read like uh, hex 100 bytes. And we have some memory here. So this is actually uh, the proc struct in the kernel memory for launch D. So Obviously this doesn't really mean much to us at this point because we have no idea how this proc struct is defined unless you've looked at this before. But obviously that's the purpose of this video to actually research this and understand how this works. So let's start by going on uh, the xnu source because obviously this is a, an open source project. So we type xnu github and we'll just go here. And if we just search for proc struct or struct proc as it would be defined, and uh, we can just scroll through until we find the file that this is gonna be stored in. Now I actually already do know where this is, it's in uh, proc internal.h. So if we just go in here, we can scroll down and find where this proc struct is actually uh, defined. And you can see here we have struct proc, and there's actually a comment here saying description of a process. This structure contains the information needed to manage a thread of control known, as a known in Unix as a process. It has references to substructures containing descriptions of things that the process uses but may share with related processes. So essentially this is the BSD level process. So in the XNU kernel, we have several different layers. We have the BSD layer, we have the MUC layer, which is where the tasks will be represented, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but this is the BSD layer proc, uh, the process. So this layer essentially defines the process with a process ID. It will have a pointer to an underlying task, which will then have underlying threads of execution, um, but this is the kind of the higher level in the kernel level of a process. So uh, this is how it's defined. So all of these elements, essentially, this, this is just a huge struct containing lots of different variables. And um, that is actually what we're seeing here in this in this kernel memory. It's just the obviously the byte representation of these uh, these variables from the proc struct. So we can already start to piece together what these things actually mean. So for example, if we look at this list entry thing, this is the first thing in the proc struct. And if you look at where it's defined, this is actually a, uh, there's two pointers. It's, uh, this actually manages a doubly linked list of all of the proc structs in the kernel. So essentially we'll have the first pointer will be a pointer to the previous proc struct, and then the, the next point will be the, pre uh, the, the, pre the proc struct after this one. So it's just a doubly linked list, there'll be just two pointers. And this actually makes sense if we look at the first things in the memory here, we do actually have two pointers. We can see this by the fact they have loads of Fs at the start, because kernel pointers always have these bits set as Fs. So um, you can, we can see that these are actually the two pointers in this doubly linked list. So this first pointer here will be the pointer to the previous proc struct, 
where it should be the kernel, which is process ID zero. And then the next one will be a process after launch D, which I don't know what that would be. Probably uh, the, the jailbreak D in, in this case, because I'm running this on my iPhone 10 on iOS 11. So this is running Electra jailbreak. Um, but yeah, so this is how we're kind of gonna interpret and understand what this memory is doing. Now, one thing you actually notice is we have a problem already because this phone uh, that we're looking at the kernel memory of, this phone is on iOS 11.1.1. Uh, and the X new source code that we're currently looking at is the latest version of X new. So this is obviously, uh, it could have changed. And in this case, it has changed in, in the in context of the proc struct. So the thing after these should be a pointer to the task, the underlying task. But you can see actually the next thing is just this value one. Now that's because obviously this proc struct has been slightly modified through the different revisions of X new. So we're gonna to have to actually go and find out what version of the X new kernel I'm running on this phone. And then we're gonna go and get the old version of the source code uh, before we can continue. So to do that, we can actually use the iPhone wiki. It has a list of all of the iOS versions along with uh, the kernel versions they have. So let's just type kernel uh, in here. And if we scroll down, you can see here we have this big table which shows all of the different iOS versions, even including the beta versions, along with a huge version string for whichever kernel they're running. So if we if we scroll down to 11.1.1, so here you can see 11.1.1, these different ranges of iOS versions have the same kernel here. And we can go on this X new source browser and actually look for this specific version. You can see we can find that there and now we can look in the code. So if we just go and find that file, so we look where this file actually was again, it was bsd sys proc internal.h, so we're just going to here, bsd, and here we are, proc internal.h. So this is the, the version of the proc struct that will be represented on my phone right now. So we're just gonna look at this one as it, obviously this is the relevant one. So if we scroll back down to where the proc struct is defined, you can see how this actually does make more sense now. So the thing between the doubly linked list entries and between the task is actually a PID, which will actually make sense because we looked for process ID one. So this would make perfect sense that we have the value one stored here. So that is obviously launched here. So uh, yeah, so the thing after that is the task structure. So this pointer here actually points to the underlying task for this uh, process, which uh, is, as I said, at the muck layer, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, but yeah, some, some other things. If we actually look further down in the memory, so let's just explore, say, hex 400 bytes, uh, we will see some actual ASCII bytes here, and that will be actually a string representing the name of this process. So in this case, it should be launch D, and we can actually check that we got the right process if we just copy these ASCII bytes here, and then open up iHex, and just paste in these bytes. You can see that we actually get here launch D, obviously spelt backwards due to being in little endian, but that is the correct process. Obviously, we did find the correct process. Um, and we could also check as well that the previous proc struct does point to the kernel. So if we take this first, the very first pointer, this should point to the previous proc struct. So let's just read um, hex 400 bytes from there as well. And we'll take the ASCII for this one and we will just put that back into the iHex. And you can see this one here does say kernel spelled backwards. And uh, there is actually, it should, take, it should take kernel task. I only copied a few bytes from that, but you can see that does point to the previous proc struct, which is the kernel. And you can actually notice that the kernel will not have a previous uh, proc struct. So you can see here, the first, uh, the first 64 bits in this, in the kernel's proc structure are actually all just zero because the kernel is the first process and therefore it doesn't have a previous one, it only has a next one. Another element that we have just right underneath the task pointer is actually a pointer to another proc struct, but this is actually the parent proc, uh, the parent process. So in the case of launch D, the previous proc struct and the parent proc struct should actually be the same because obviously the kernel was the previous one um, and the kernel would have initially spawned uh, launch D. So if we go back to, uh, here we go, we can see this is the previous proc struct pointer, which we know points to the kernel. And you can see the one after the task pointer, this is actually the same pointer as this one. So the kernel is the parent process of launch D. Every other process should have a parent process of launch D as well, because uh, launch D is kind of like the master process in, in iOS user land. So if we go to like the next proc struct here, let's just take a look at this one. We're gonna read uh, 400 uh, bytes from, uh, hex 400 bytes from memory. And we're gonna actually check the, uh, the ASCII to see which process this is. I believe this is the jailbreak uh, da daemon. So let's just run in here. Uh, okay, actually, this is the, the this is AMFI. Um, and you can see that the parent process for this one will actually point to, again, the previous uh, proc struct in this case, which is uh, launch D. All right, so now we're gonna look at the task structure. So the task is, as I said, the underlying, uh, this is the muck layer uh, representation of a process, which will handle the threads and everything like that. So let's go and look for the task. Now I'm just gonna use uh, the, the latest one to actually search for 
the task structure and then we'll just search for where that uh, file is in the in my version. All right, so it's in this uh, path here. So in task.h, the task header file, we can scroll down and you can see here, this is how a task is defined. This as again, as I said, is the muck layer representation of a process. So at the task layer, we have uh, in a way some lower level things we have. You can see here we have a VM map type, which is actually points to kind of an address space description for this specific task for the virtual memory address space. Um, and if you want me to do a different video on that, actually exploring page tables, virtual memory, uh, the kernel PMAP and how all of that works, that would actually be a pretty interesting topic because I don't know too much about that myself at the moment. So let me know in the comments below if you want me to do another video in the style of this, uh, talking about virtual memory. Um, but anyway, so yeah, here's how the task is defined. I'm not really gonna go over many of the properties in here because uh, admittedly, I don't know too much about this, but this is just essentially a layer below the BSD layer. And uh, that's all of the detail I'm really gonna go into with this video. So basically using this knowledge, I'm gonna write some quick program that is going to essentially find the kernel's, uh, the kernel's task, or the kernel's proc struct, sorry, and basically iterate through every single task by just following through this linked list. And then it's gonna basically print out some information about the tasks and uh, yeah, just to kind of, just to do something with this knowledge, I guess. So um, if you're wondering how we actually even find the first task or the first proc struct, sorry, the kernel's proc struct actually has a symbol in the iOS kernel. So all you need to do is write a program, obviously on a jailbroken device, using your access to the, to the kernel task port, the uh, task for page zero or host special port four. Um, and then we can actually find a hard coded address for the kernel's, uh, the kernel's proc struct at the ASLR slide for this, this kernel runtime, and then go straight to that kernel proc struct and then start reading all the pointers from there and uh, just printing them all out. So also um, we can actually find our own proc struct, which is a, sometimes a desi desired function with um, jailbreaking if you wanna give yourself some entitlements or anything like that. And this has actually been publicly seen in, um, at least in the Yaolu jailbreak, I assume other jailbreaks have probably used this as well, but uh, they actually do, if we go into the Yaolu source code, and if we go into jailbreak.m, uh, we scroll down here, you will see that we actually have this code, which is essentially, it's iterating through every single proc struct in the kernel memory using its ability to read from anywhere in kernel memory. And you can see it's actually reading uh, the proc struct plus 16 bytes, which will have the, uh, the actual PID, the, the PID ID, the process ID, and it's checking if that process ID is equal to the return of get PID, which will be this current process process ID. And if it is, then essentially you've found your own process. Um, it's also doing a check down here to see if the PID equals one, because then obviously it's launched D. Um, so you can use that to find your own process ID if you wanna give yourself entitlements, as I said, that's sometimes a desired function, so you may actually have a, a use for this, uh, this information. But anyway, I'm gonna write a quick program that's gonna loop through all of the different process IDs and print them all out, and uh, it'll probably make it stop when it finds our current process ID. And uh, yeah, I'll be back once that is done. All right, so I've just wrote this quick program here that basically it does, as I said, it loops through all of the different proc structs and just prints out some basic information just to kind of demonstrate this knowledge. So if we just run this here, it's called proc list. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see more of it. Um, and we just run this. You can see what it does is it just prints out a huge list of all of the process structures. And then you can see some kernel pointers in here. So if we actually go right to the top where this actually starts, uh, you can see that, first of all, obviously we get kernel task port because we need to actually read kernel memory. Uh, we work out the KASLR slide, and then we start reading the proc struct. So first of all, we start with process zero, which always is the kernel task. And then we can see here we go to process one, which as we know is launch D. And then after that, all of the other processes that follow the actual PID IDs, the process IDs are not actually in any kind of order, or at least they don't seem to be because there's a huge jump from process one to process 214 but we're just reading through, we're following, we're, we're traversing that linked list, um, finding all of these different proc structs. And I'm, you can see I'm printing out the actual address of the proc struct, the address of the underlying task for that process, and also what the parent process is. So what you can see, um, as I already did mention, you can see this again clearly here, is that the parent process of launch D, this pointer is actually the same as the kernel's pointer for its own process structure because the kernel is the parent of launch D. Every other process, its parent is always gonna be launch D. So you can see all of these parents are here. The, the parent process is always pointing to launch D. So um, yeah, you can see I've also got the actual, the name of the process, which is done by just reading out those ASCII bytes and fill them into, uh, put them into a, a string. Um, on some of them, the actual name of the process is longer than the 16 bytes that I end up reading. So obviously it doesn't actually get the full name, but yeah, that's something that's an easy fix. But anyway, so 
Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something uh, interesting from this. I know, as I said at the beginning, it's not really specifically applicable to um, iOS exploitation, but it's just kind of an interesting thing to actually to understand at least how it works, so you can you can know and uh, use this knowledge for um, for something in the future. I've definitely found this useful with some of the projects I've been working on in the last few months. So hopefully, you guys will actually. Uh, find some use for this knowledge. Um, if not, then hopefully you just enjoyed watching this uh, kind of research ex experience and uh, maybe you can apply that to actually research a different topic that you're interested in learning about within the iOS kernel or anything really. So let me know in the comments if you uh, want to see a style of video similar to this, but as I mentioned with virtual memory, talking about the kernel page tables, how all the address translation works from physical to virtual memory and how all of that is stored and also at the process level because processes each have a PMAP as well as the kernel does. Um, but yeah, so that'll be something for another video. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, let me know what you thought. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more and I'll see you next time.